So my presentation today will be about the passion project. In other words, how we can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to uh, uh, to learn in dermatology to recognize common skin conditions on a project in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, this is the project where you can go already. If you if you don't list, if you stop listening now, you can go to teledem.ai. Learn about the project, about the current teams, as well as subscribe to your newsletter. So how am I going to divide the presentation? It will be divided into World Health Organization Compatible Solutions, um, introducing artificial intelligence, just really simple, uh, combining this artificial intelligence into the passion project. And the last part will be the beginning of a discussion on how we can uh, build a collaboration. So. Dermatology in Africa is like everywhere in the world. Uh, there are plenty of skin conditions which children already have, which is a, a, a listed as being 87% uh, in a study. And uh, there's not a lot of dermatologists in the world, so it's 160,000. But if you go to um, Tanzania, this number falls to uh, one in a few million. And uh, even in rural parts in other countries like India, you have one in a million. So uh, the idea is we do want to maintain that dermatological expertise because it does make a difference. But uh, how do we do it if we don't have any more dermatologists? Uh, luckily, we have a very high network coverage in, uh, in sub-Saharan Africa overall. And uh, plenty of people have smartphones and there's a good network coverage as well. So uh, we would like uh, to do low-hanging fruits and focus on skin conditions where uh, they make up a, uh, the large chunk of what we see or what other colleagues might see, and as well as management strategies which can be amenable to treatment. So that includes eczema, impetigo, tinea, scabies, and insect bites. So how can we work uh, according to World Health Organization objectives? So there's a brochure in, um, for, uh, for WHO on skin conditions. It's actually about neglected tropical disease, but there's a part in dermatology where, overall where they actually uh, uh, measure that uh, skin, these five skin conditions as being 80% of what we see. And then we have sustainable development goals agreed by in the World Health Assembly, uh, where we would like to um, focus on good health, well-being. So um, work on communicable diseases such as empathigo and scabies and access universal health care um, for everyone. And, and even if we don't have uh, enough uh, doctors, we want to have enough expertise again. So and then uh, is to reduce inequalities. So uh, we think the scabies and patigo, okay, someone's going to diagnose it and it's going to be just a bit of morbidity. No, if we had this study, which was introduced by Claire Fuller from the International Foundation of Dermatology, there is uh, plenty of mortality as well uh, if these skin conditions, scabies being one of them, becomes infected. So uh, I will just introduce artificial intelligence, how we thought the hypothesis. So we want to know in that research project if we can uh, build uh, some knowledge using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and how we can implement it through clinical trials into a clinical um, imp impactful uh, solution. So uh, initially, I mean, that was the beginning. So we have a team in, in Switzerland, in China, at the RTTC in Moshi and uh, the University of Antananarivo in Madagascar. So uh, a short introduction to artificial intelligence. So how does machine learning work? So, the, uh, so what does make artificial intelligence models really work? So the answer is we need a lot of what you see on the left is data. We don't have a lot of it on African skin, but we, it does, it's not going to work if we don't have a lot of it. And then you have uh, an algorithm, which is the other thing. So an algorithm is basically a rule. And you can imagine doing it uh, uh, when your kid learns uh, tables of multiplication. So it's going to do for 7 times 8 makes 56. And then you're going to put the same input in the calculator and you write 7 times 8 and you're going to get 56. But you're not going to know how these conclusions have been reached either by the child or 
by the calculator, but you just know it works and that you have a candidate model which can actually be deployed and integrated into the system. So how do algorithms uh, uh, learn? So the, we use artificial neural networks and you can imagine you can be uh, inputting pictures on the left, which can be haphazard, and you're going to reach conclusions initially also haphazard from the output layer. But these results are also going to be compared uh, to the real ones uh, in, in some uh, data sets, which are labeled, what we call that. And uh, you can be having some hidden layers, which are going to learn through backpropagation, and they're going to be able to adapt their weights. And in the end, you can reach an output layer, which is not haphazard, but which corresponds to reality. I mean, that's the goal. And uh, then the question is, why are we going to use Chinese and Caucasian uh, skin to learn African skin? It sounds a bit like something quite illogical. But uh, as I said earlier, the problem is that we don't have enough data on, uh, on African skin, and we have to cre create that data. Of course, the most important thing is to collect data which is accurate on the ground. But in, until then, uh, try to uh, label some data on... Caucasian and Chinese skin to be able to learn uh, on black skin models. So uh, we are using a technique called generative adversarial networks, where you can imagine a population group on the left, Chinese, and on the right, it's going to be um, Caucasian, and you're going to be labeling. For example, you have Danny Morgan folds on the eyes for topic dermatitis, you can be labeling the image as being a topic dermatitis with Danny Morgan folds. And you can be adapting that to uh, an African ancestry and you can be creating data which, uh, would, which is new, which is relevant, but which doesn't exist. So for example, you have these little st these styles uh, on the left-hand side uh, on, on different people and you create that person on the right who is a, a result of these uh, style mixtures, but who doesn't really exist. So uh, the idea is then we're going to mix real samples collected on site with these uh, generated images, and we're going to force a discriminator to accept these images as being part of the original data set for uh, which it's going to learn. So what else do we need? So we need an algorithm which reflects experience. Of course, if we have to learn from scratch, we learn from scratch. But we want to use a technique called transfer learning, where we already recognize uh, these conditions on uh, Caucasian Chinese skin. And we're going to be transferring these learned parameters before the learning process actually takes place on African data sets. It's a bit like recognizing uh, a car in traffic and recognizing a car uh, uh, on, on, a, on a path, for example. They both have wheels, they both have headlights, but they might have a different behavior. But in the end, what we need is more data. So pictures we already have, which have been collected, also new pictures that we collect. And if we can, we can label these images and unlabel them to do a process called semi-supervised learning, where we can actually learn uh, on the images we collect and actually uh, define how much work we're going to do in the beginning to be able to reach these results. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the passion project. So uh, how we are integrating this artificial intelligence with the clinical trials. So uh, this project is non-for-profit. I should have said that right in the beginning. So it's funded by a foundation which is based in Switzerland, which is a member of the International Telecom Union, uh, uh, which is an international organization part of the U United Nations. Uh, and its goal is actually to use a digital health artificial intelligence uh, based solutions to solve problems in children in areas of need. And the thing I'm not mentioning here is that uh, it, it, it does also um, favor urbanized populations because now uh, most of the people actually live in cities. So uh, what do w the disease we chose again? So atopic dermatitis, impetigo, tinea, scabies, and insect bites. And the reason again is that they make 80% of uh, dermatosis on site and are amenable to management strategies locally. And if you need a treatment, which is medical, it's not always easy to access the medication, but at least it's part of the essential drug list of the WHO. So it's 
seen as being essential. So uh, this project is actually a research project, but uh, again, clinical goals. So uh, only if uh, the, 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 the diagnosis reached by a dermatologist and of a machine is of similar accuracy, can we move to different milestones? So again, milestone one is for a diagnosis compared made by a dermatologist, then by a medical officer, then by healthcare provider. And then only if that works, can we uh, deploy it uh, into a tool. No mistakes. Huh? <laughs> so uh, so um, I, this is just part of the team now. So uh, the team is growing. And um, uh, for, for the moment, I'd just like to thank uh, uh, participants uh, working. So we have also some advisors, which I didn't mention here. Uh, we have a, a Professor Soyer for, for teledermatology, and we have a Dr. Uh, Pasquale, who is our photography advisor. And uh, again, so we are open to collaborations. So uh, within the passion project, so actually now uh, we, we try to uh, uh, create a list of potential partners uh, because it's true that uh, we will get further funding through IDA, and maybe even if that doesn't materialize, we still want to make the project grow. So, uh, so for for what I see as a collaboration is uh, first and foremost image collection, but it depends on geographies and on time. So we also interested in evaluation of uh, the diagnosis. Uh, also involving other healthcare providers uh, for the later phases of the study, if you have a network. And we have full of possibilities. So the thing is that we doctors uh, tend to be very conservative. Uh, we, it took us a while to actually integrate the, the new science, uh, which makes today's practice. And on the contrary, uh, engineers who work in artificial intelligence are very innovative. And I'm a doctor, so I, it took me some time to become innovative. But um, uh, it, it's an opportunity we might have here. And uh, the thing is that we would like to um, show ourselves as, as being uh, dermatology experts and not, and not just dermatologists because we are not where we need necessarily all the time. So anyway, thank you for, for listening to this presentation. And now I'll, 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 uh, I'll leave it, uh, I'll give the floor back. Thank you. And again, here's the collaboration uh, and the logo.